Figaro is pretty much the perfect opera. It's everything. I think this piece is everything. It's one of the absolutely outstanding pieces of art ever. The wonderful thing about Mozart is he does it with such a light feather. As a singer, it makes you feel very naked when you're singing Mozart because there's nowhere to hide. You just have to feel the emotion and you have to let the music really go through your heart. If I could sing this for my entire life, I would be very, very happy. <laughs> so the opera opens early in the morning on the day of Figaro and Susanna's wedding. Figaro, who's one of the senior servants in the household, and Susanna, who's one of the senior maids, but they're, they're not that high up, so it's a very big thing for the whole household. It's a wonderful wedding day. Figaro is acting out of deepest love. He's a very, very warm character. Susanna is intelligent, she is loving, she's funny, and she definitely has some flaws within all of that, but I think that she's the type of character that you would like to know in real life. Well, of course, there's the Count at the top. And then there's the Countess, his wife. The Count does what he likes and amuses himself. And that includes with some of the prettier members of the household. And he's got his eye on Susanna. So there's a real upstairs, downstairs going on. He's aristocratic, childish, petulant, mischievous, funny, kind, no. No, he's not. The Countess of Almaviva is um, a very strong and modern woman. Normally you would expect a woman during that time to look away from her husband's desires that are outside of the marriage. She is not like that. She wants a really honest relationship full of love and fights for that. When you see the Countess lonely and neglected, and yet so young and so beautiful and so relatable. Of course, it's incredibly touching and poignant to see her struggle. Cherubino is the page boy of the Count, and um, he is not so secretly and madly in love with the Countess. Even though he's very scared of the Count, he still tries to copy his moves and learn from the great count. Just make it simpler. Can we just try that we don't do the circling, that we just make it simpler, keep coming back to each other, but, but in between times, it's the thinking that we need to read. The Marriage of Figaro is based on this wonderful Beaumarchais play, which was written at a time of revolution. At the first performance, there was so much excitement created because it's so risky, it was so dangerous, it kept being banned. There was so much excitement when it was allowed to be performed that in the crush to get in, three people were killed. I mean, that sounds like we're making a joke out of it, it's awful. But that's how exciting it was. That's how exciting it was. And very soon after, Mozart sets it as an opera and it's right up Mozart Street because it's so human and it's, it's about human relationships, how people get on. It needs to be more, more tender also in expression. Somebody coming to The Marriage of Figaro for the first time would think probably this is a very, very period piece. It's a sort of Jane Austen on the opera stage. But underneath, there is a huge amount of subversive undercurrents. Mozart died incredibly young, but he experienced or he had an intuition about female character, male character, nobility, peasantry, servants, masters, and so on, of extraordinary astuteness. He just understood the whole social fabric and knew, which is the real clue to it, he knew how to translate that in the musical terms. That's what he does sublimely. There's nobody to touch him. Mozart's music is what makes it accessible to everybody today because it is so human. It will make you cry and it will make you laugh because it's so real. It's a masterpiece, it's extraordinary.